Here we are, and we're online, it appears. And Rob Manson and Robert Fitzgerald, welcome. Hi. G'day, Alex. Rob Manson, uh, I believe that you're an Australian citizen, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, and I believe that from what we understand from much of um, what we read online is that Google Glass is predominantly um, only available for people who are part of the uh, developer teams for Glass. Um, so how does it come about that an Australian citizen connected on Australian geography is wearing Glass? So we've been lucky enough to um, do some work with uh, one of the founders of Keyhole. They uh, basically turned into Google Earth. Uh, Dave Lorenzini, he's um, a great uh, evangelist for, for glass and wearables and so he's part of the Explorer program and so he's been kind enough to lend us a pair so we could use them in some of the prototyping we're doing around the augmented web. And this essentially opens up a historical new door for the way that we can contemplate um, what has been championed for over three decades as being digital eyewear. Mm -hmm. uh, and now digital eyewear, which is, if you could uh, maybe elucidate um, an audience that, that we are talking with now, this is being recorded for the benefit of an another number of audiences. Sure. Um, can you just give us an idea as to some of the sorts of things that you think that you would like to um, explore mapping to this particular device? Yeah, right. So, yeah, having used for a relatively short time but consistently, um, it seems to me that the experience of capturing and sharing media is um, the biggest impact of you know how it's set up at the moment. So that first person and the immediacy of being able to capture and share um, at any time is, is a really a big change. And so it makes you feel much closer to that. Uh, but then it also makes you feel more vulnerable when you know you accidentally share things as well, which happens. Um, and then so I think that sharing of perspectives, especially if you're talking about uh, assessment and collaboration, those sorts of things, um, for um, experts and educators to be able to uh, reach out and, and share other students or um, people's perspectives, point of view, um, I think that has a really big impact. So uh, for, for a period of time, the, Rob Manson, there was um, the idea that, you know, we, we interacted with uh, augmented reality and as Steve, Professor Steve Mann would, would um, complement that with augmediated reality, essentially this is taking, this is making everything now hands free. Would that, does that sort of concur with you? Um, I think so generally, but so it's a combination of things. There's um, there's head gestures, so I can turn the device off by flicking my head back like that, and I can turn it back on by tapping it. Um, mm -hmm. You can certainly do things where you, you know you can scroll around a browser and and um, move your head to navigate. So there are a, a, you know a reasonable number of things you can do that are largely hands free. You can do things that are voice activated as well, but they're quite conspicuous in a public place. Um, Saying okay, glass. Um, it you know that's quite a, a, a public thing to do. Um, yeah. Great. So I, I really only have one question before I'm going to hand over to Robert Fitzgerald, who's the director of the Inspire Centre, University of Canberra, associate dean. He's done. I'll let I'll let Robert talk uh, introduce himself. But really, Rob Manson. What I'm very interested in, where my research has been, and and you know, leading on from my interest in point of view or point of eye uh, technologies, is really this perhaps um, is uh, a new domain where a content management system of an organisation and an individual can seamlessly, while that person's in the field, capture, mm -hmm. interact with, perhaps geofence, perhaps restrict, perhaps encourage whole series of different ways that we can now design for learning. It really is, it is a device, that I think, that we can contemplate in terms of a new digital interface um, in an educational context. Um, I'm just wondering, in the, in the near future, Rob, how, will, how do you see this playing out in terms of, you know, is this technology going to be coming, like, relatively soon? Is it, is, are we on the cusp or the verge of this becoming, you know, relatively you know, widespread, but you know, where are we at? Um, yeah, I think we're, we're right on the cusp now. So from our perspective, it's a number of things. So, you know, the, the broad mobile penetration has gone beyond just, like, 
you know, broad. It's it's now you know deep right through every every part of society. Um, mm -hmm. And these wearable form factors are coming on. So not just Google Glass, um, Recon Jet, M100. There's, there's lots of different devices that are similar-ish. So at least filling that sort of form factor. Um, mm -hmm. And you combine that with the changes that have happened in uh, native application design and um, uh, web technologies as well. And so yeah, I think we're really on the cusp of you know sort of maybe even a six-month horizon. It's really going to be quite quick for it to have a noticeable impact. Um, I think it'll happen faster than the mobile revol revolution even did, um, but obviously, you know, it's a it's a bell curve and it takes a while to full diffusion as well. Absolutely. So I'll reserve all of my social questions for another interview at some other point in time. I'm going <laughs> to hand through to um, Robert Fitzgerald. Robert, uh, you're doing some amazing things there through the Inspire Centre and what you've done with AR Studio in the past and many other initiatives. Can you give us an idea of where we're heading, Rob Fitzgerald, with um, some of the interactions we might have with Rob Manson and, and all of the other uh, initiatives that we've got underway at the moment. Sure, and thanks Alex for, for organising this. And, and Rob, we, we've had the, the, the pleasure of working with Rob uh, through the AR Studio project and we've, um, um, it's been great to be connected um, with both you and Alex in terms of the, um, the, you know, the work we've been doing on AR. But I, I think one of the things that's of most interest to me is in, in terms of you, you talk about we've been on the cusp of something, and um, we're going to have a bit of a conversation about this data mines conference that we're very keen to um, or we're, we're moving forward on, um, and this notion about data, um, not just um, about the learner but for the learner. Um, and I was struck as you were talking, Rob, um, of this idea of you know. How does glass become part of a joint activity, a collaborative activity? Um, many years ago, the, uh, uh, Charles Crook wrote a book called *The Collaborative Experience of of, um, of uh, Computers*. Um, I think that was was the actual name. But um, one of the observations we had in the very early days of, of PCs in classrooms was that um, we only had a couple in the classroom. And uh, when we looked what happened, um, it wasn't just a solitary experience. We had groups of kids working around computers. And it was a very timely reminder to look um, beyond what was happening on the screen and look around. Look around the way there was this, this shared conversation, this joint activity. In fact, Charles Cook talks about, you know, rather than talking about collaboration, let's talk about joint activity. And I wonder what, what you've your early experience with, the, with Glass, um, you mentioned sharing. Do, what do you see as some of the joint activities that people could engage um, in? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's a really good question. And I'd like to start with saying that, um, to Alex's earlier point about asking some social questions later, uh, while I'll talk about some great things that I think this is useful for, for collaboration, it really does have a big um, interpersonal impact. Like there is still quite a barrier, and it's quite imposing for a lot of people to talk intimately with somebody wearing glass. Um, yep. But so in terms of the collaboration, so there's a there's a, a couple of different um, scenarios that we're exploring at the moment. So one's around remote collaboration, and one's around uh, in a shared environment. So it's similar to a classroom or a workshop. Yep. And in both of those, it's really around how do you uh, seamlessly weave in a digital space and allow people to share pointers and objects and be able to collaborate in that space also um, with their separate displays. So um, now you just really have a mesh of displays and a room will probably have a number of, certain, like the Inspire Center is full of you know smart TVs and displays that you can just um, um, uh, you know air connect things to and, and stream to. So I think there's a lot more of that just throwing content from device to device and and uh, using that as a way of expressing while you're you're talking almost an extension of your, your language. Yep, yep. Well, I think it's interesting because uh, we, we, we talk a lot about making learning visible, uh, making mm -hmm. the process of learning visible and I think these are some really good examples of, um, of you know, uh, visualization opportunities here as well. I, I just I've just got a couple um, uh, points that Charles Cook made. He talked about collaborations with computers, collaborations in relation to, at computers, around and through. And I think those different sorts of perspectives are, are, are quite helpful as we start to think about, um, Alex in particular, what the data, what data we might be talking about, how it might be, be used, um, 
because I think Glass is actually generating um, the data. Alec, um, Rob's seen this opportunity of seeing through us. We, we also, um, uh, well, not quite right at the moment, but we have an opportunity to actually in, engage with that data um, in, in other ways as well. Rob and I mentioned that earlier when we just prior to the connecting here, we talked about what it's going to mean to be able to see through people rather than as we are visualised here looking at each other in our, in our standard form that on mass we'll be able to look and connect with people and see through their point of view and I think mm. that perhaps signals a real change in the way that we can uh, mobilise around collaboration or togetherness and uh, and also Rob Manson there there is from what I understand a huge flurry of activity in terms of engineering and software design and so on around a glassware where W A R E a glassware store like just as many apps are being developed um, for for Google Glass at the moment as there are going into standard handheld technology. Yeah, I think um, maybe maybe not quite the volume yet, but I'd certainly say as much of the interest and um, much of the the limit on that's probably based around scarcity and access because it's a controlled release program. Um, but yeah, there's there's um, a lot of interest from different developers, and it it's a it's really an interesting platform. Um, and considering it hasn't even been released, it isn't actually an official product yet. There's an amazing amount of interest. There is, and that's testament to uh, the investment made by one of the world's largest corporations around uh, identity management, information management, and communication. So really, it's a it's quite an amazing, you know, as you said, we're right on the very cusp of an, not just an emergent technology, there's a long history that goes and precedes this development of this body-worn body uh, video and other uh, AR-based technologies. Rob uh, Fitzgerald, is there um, any, any specific um, points that you'd like to raise in relation to data mines for the audience that don't even know what data mines is, 2014? Sure. Um, so the, the the conference that we're talking about is Data Minds uh, 14. It's a conference that looks at data-driven education, what that might mean, um, and I think the approach that we're we're taking, and, and this is a part of that, the, the early beginnings, to look at how we might generate data around this conference, um, how we might use it as an opportunity to engage people in interesting conversations. Um, leading up to the conference, uh, ways of which we might start to interrogate that data um, and I suppose start to look at different ways we might make sense of that. We have um, one of the initiatives at the University of Canberra here, Rob, is um, uh, we were successful with a grant to establish a Centre for Quality Teaching and Learning that's attached to our faculty. Um, that's a $27 million project um, over six years that will develop um, a strong research dimension um, as well as a strong professional learning and I think this discussion we've been having around sort of sensor based networks about, about data and how it might be used and particularly how, how you, um, learners might use that data is sort of really timely in that context. I think we need to, if you like, um, expand the, the reach of our traditional classrooms or lecture halls. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Susan Redeka talks a lot about um, in the future of learning the importance of personalization or personalized learning, the, the importance of collaboration and the importance of informal learning, how we blend those formal and informal learning opportunities. And I think data is the thing that, that can potentially join these um, um, you know, the, the, these different dimensions. So the Data Minds Conference I think is, is an opportunity to also go a bit beyond um, you know, a, Quite a traditional, just looking at those that generate data and what they do with it. But what happens if we open this up to others? Um, and I think, particularly, um, not just for teachers, but I think for students. Um, I think mm -hmm. these students are already in control of, to some extent, um, some of their their learning paths and their data. Most often outside of classrooms. What can we learn from looking more carefully at that? Um, and so, the centre of quality teaching learning is actually talking about both the science and the art of teaching. Um, how do we communicate this to, to future teachers? Um, I actually find, um, I, I don't find the, the Google Glass intimidating. Maybe I've 
got used to wearing glasses all my life. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. my, my experience has already been augmented for many, many years, um, and in, in most ways, quite, quite been short-sighted, uh, quite positive ways. Uh, it helps to be able to see the ball before it, you know, it hits you. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to uh, um, know, Rob, how does, uh, you talked about some of the social experiences, how have others um, responded to you with, with glass? Um, and that's as much of the um, experiment, like it's, for, for us it's a, um, a real uh, sort of ethno research project just mm -hmm. having um, access to it for a while. So, you know, it ranges from um, most people actually don't seem to notice it out and about. I, I'm, I'm sure there's a, a mass amount of, most people don't actually care about technology as much as I do. Um, <laughs> And then there's a certain amount of people just uh, seeing out of the corner of their eye. It probably looks like sunglasses because it's it's not. It's certainly if you're wearing a baseball cap or something else, it's certainly not over overly um, overt or you know um, obvious. But um, in social contexts and and you know meetings and those sorts of things, it really ranges from um, people feeling very uncomfortable. I think as much of that's about the the camera aspect of it. Um, yep. I think a lot of people feel uncomfortable being recorded in a lot of different contexts. Um, through to fascination, people just coming up and, and just asking and saying, you know, can I try it? And I think that's a big part of the Explorer program. Is, you know, it's an outreach program as well. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely does seem to have... So, um, because it does obfuscate. So while it's, it is augmenting my view with some information, it's not completely immersive. It's just a picture-in-a-picture -picture sort of view. Sure. Um, so they're having access to information, but not really an immersive overlay. Um, but the rest of the um, form factor, while it's, it's tiny and a brilliant piece of industrial design, like it really is just amazingly small and amazingly powerful, and the battery life is, is really, really good. Um, but even that does take away a little bit of your field of view, and um, you do feel that that's cut down a little bit of that interpersonal communication flow that happens between people as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't personally. I don't think it's a negative experience. I'm, I'm, um, my partner Alex, I think she finds it a lot more invasive, but that's probably because I think you spend more time, and you're the person not wearing it. It's much more noticeable. But um, it's a it's a fascinating thing we're discussing and seeing. And I think there's nothing but an emotional response to it. That's the only way you can explore that. Mm. Mm. Yep. yep. And, I, and I, as I said, I, I think these these opportunities, and I think this this conference in particular. You know, how might this become an opportunity for this shared activity, this joint activity? I think even our some of our early conversations, Rob, around AR Studio and being immersed in that, that studio model was this, um, I think the, the value that emerges from the collective activity um, that you know, to a large extent um, uh, many of our, our interactions were not scripted. They, they very much emerged from a, a group of people being Often in the same space, but not not necessarily, but but certainly engaged in a, in a, a sort of a shared or joint activity. And I, I think I'd like to explore that more, Alex, in terms of you know how we might um, sort of frame that data mines conference as an opportunity for that joint activity too. Absolutely, entirely. Rob Manson, we're really appreciative of your time tonight. Um, we're we're both excited and enthralled. Um, you know, we're enthused and we're appalled. I don't know what other things you know that people will coin, but or we're really, also bald. Some of us are bald. Yeah, we're also <laughs> most entirely we're bald. Um, it's it's a it's definitely uh, a, a, an unnerving and new dimension that's opening up, uh, and it's everything that that Professor Steve Mann and the group at ISTAS 13 predicted. And um, I'm really very appreciative, very sincerely appreciative that you, uh, Rob Manson, and your team um, are the custodians of this and the connection with us because um, I can see great things come from this in both, in both a advantageous in terms of business but also an advantageous in terms of learning, reflection, and, uh, and 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 critical discourse around the technology, you know, wider. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Yeah, thanks. Yep. And thanks, Rob. And give 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 my regards to Alex too. Yeah. Oh, oh. Thanks a lot. See you online. Talk to you See later. You later.